All right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin, and today we are gonna talk about why I think these fabric pots here make great outdoor worm bins. And we're also gonna touch on the three different types of earthworms according to their behavior. So let's go ahead and dig in the center here. And we did put some shredded cardboard around the sides, and that's what you're seeing there. But right in here, we're seeing some great earthworms right underneath, and we're starting to get to some of the bigger food that we put in here. Now, it has been three weeks exactly since we were in here and I do remember putting in some big pieces of broccoli and check it out they hollowed out the stem part and right there lots of great worms to include baby right there by my thumb and some bigger worms right here so let's kind of review what we put in here last First, we put down dry shredded cardboard, followed by a tomato top, strawberries, an orange slice, a whole tomato, cucumber, banana peels with strawberries frozen to them, and avocado shells. Then we added some yellow squash slices and the rest of the strawberries. Next, we added some big pieces of broccoli, a lettuce stalk, and some carrot tops, followed by another handful of frozen veggies and fruit. Finally, we added some homemade worm chow, spent coffee grounds, and pulverized eggshell grit. And of course, we topped it off with shredded cardboard and material from the sides and here's some more of that broccoli stock I think that we're finding and we've got an avocado shell right there with a bunch of worms in it so I'll put that to the side and let's keep digging down the center now one of the things that you'll notice in a worm bin is that the material although it seems a little compact here is really nice and fluffy the worms are not really burying and digging permanent burrows in the material they go all throughout it and you don't find like like, uh, you know, holes that you would consider a burrow. And that's because the kind of earthworms that you put in a compost bin are called epigeic, and they live kind of in the duff layer. So the duff layer consists of leaves and maybe decaying plant matter and even animal matter, and it's on the top. Now these worms, in an emergency, will go dig into the soil, but they are generally on the top. And the next kind of earthworm is an endogeic worm, and that kind of earthworm is going to be in the soil, kind of in your garden and they've got kind of semi-permanent burrows where we'll go in and out of the same burrow and kind of tunnel and make transportation ways through. And then the last is an ESIC. Those are going to go all the way down and burrow deep down and they will even grab like leaves or, you know, food and take it all the way down into that burrow with them. So if you are looking for some free earthworms, find a pile of leaves or a compost pile or maybe even create your own little compost pile by putting some plant material and leaves and wet it down and then put a pot over it. Maybe come back in three or four days you might find some compost worms. But if you're just digging in the garden, chances are those aren't the kind of earthworms that you're going to want to put in a worm bin because they're not really going to like being all together like this, like the epigeic worms like to be all bunched together. So we are finding just a little bit of the food scraps from the last time. It's mostly consists of those big broccoli pieces that we put in here in the stalks and maybe some of the carrot leaves or tops right there. So three weeks and that big feeding clearly is enough and if we can get around to it we'd like to see if those big feedings disappear maybe in two weeks or two and a half weeks and then we can keep adjusting but even though we harvested last time we were in here it feels like we could harvest again because the material in here is just fantastic and every handful every handful has hundreds of worms in it just like that really impressed with it so I'm gonna kind of pull from the sides and mix things up because the sides tend to be a little bit drier and it just takes a little bit longer longer for the shredded cardboard to break down in here. So we'll pull that up and if I find something like this, a avocado shell that has most of the flesh out of it. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I've got some peanut shells and avocado shells from my other worm bins and I'm just going to take them out and grind them up in my magic bullet blender. If I left these in here and I have, this bin is four years old, I've always left avocado shells in but I'm starting to collect a lot of them so we are going to pulverize them and put them back in. So yeah, let's continue grabbing from the sides and the sides are looking great even though they've got a little bit of damp shredded cardboard in them and that is another thing that I really love about the outdoor worm bin is that it is made out of some fabric pots two 20 gallon fabric pots 
And oh yeah, we got some worms right there in the middle of that. And look at those babies, lots of tiny babies. And you'll notice some other critters crawling around here, some other insects and maybe even terrestrial crustaceans in there or other kinds of arthropods. And oh yeah, lots of good stuff in here. That's because this is my most diverse worm bin. It started with some just regular compost. It sits on the ground so little critters can get in and out of it. But that's what makes it so great is because it is so forgiving. I mean, it's never going to be too moist because it breathes. It can both take in air and release water. So it doesn't matter if you flooded this thing or if you left it in the rain. As long as it's not sitting in a depression and get puddles around it, it is going to have no problem shedding the moisture that it needs to and keeping just enough for the worms to be very happy. Now, it could dry out. I can't just leave this here for a month outside in the hot Florida sun and expect it not to dry out. But the worms can flee because they can get out the bottom. The worm bin works fantastic. And I think it's one of the best worm bins to start if you want to do an outdoor worm bin because it is so forgiving. So I think we've gotten all the sides mixed in. And now we're just going to kind of do our center right here. Is this one ready? Yeah, I think this is ready. Let's get these worms out of here if I can. Mm -hmm. Actually, too many babies. Too many babies. We'll go ahead and leave that in there. And then see if I left some of the remnants that I can put in here, just like that. And we are going to do, even though I've got really good castings that I could take out right now, we are going to add some really big bedding in here. And that's okay because I always sift. I don't use any other method to get the worms out of here. So even if I have big bedding, I'll be able to separate castings from material and worms. All right, so in we go with some cardboard tubes. And uh, you know what? This may be a little bit too many. Wow. <laughs> that is a lot. And the executive producer still thinks it's a lot. Um, noted, but we're going to continue because it's got a lot of air in it. And I think the food we put in we'll kind of push it down a little bit over the next uh, you know, week to 10 days. So here we go, you've probably seen this before. It's the container that contains all the food that we just put into our freezer over the week and collects our food scraps for us. So they're ready to go for the worms. Now I like to freeze all my food because it breaks down the plant material at the cellular level. Plants have cell walls and water actually expands when it freezes. So it helps to burst those and this, after about an hour or so is going to turn into complete mush. So we'll put another big handful. Looks like a lot of lettuce and banana peels for this feeding. And we'll put a kiwi in there. And then of course add some color for the executive producer. All right, there we go. We've got a lot of orange peels, which are okay in moderation. Again, I told you this is a four-year-old bin. So it's very mature, has a lot of worms and a lot of microbes in it. So they're not going to have a problem with the oranges. Now, one of the other things I kind of hinted at was temperature control in this worm bin. This worm bin sits directly on the ground and the ground helps to moderate the temperature. So I don't really see any spikes in here. And this is just some of my worm chow, some expired grains from my pantry. In fact, I stopped putting temperature sensors in here because it really just wasn't an issue. And when this bin was first in service, I did have some issues because I put rice and coffee in directly and that heated it up really quick. But now I'm not having any issues with that. Probably also also because I feed a little bit better and I'm a little bit smarter. Now I put coffee in there, another food source for them. And this is some eggshell grit, which I pulverize in my magic bullet blender and the worms use it in their gizzard. Now, like I said, this sits directly on the ground, but I also keep a little white basin over the top of it to shade it. And it sits on the north side of one of my garden beds. So even though I'm in Florida, I do have shade on it for most of the day. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did hit that subscribe button and give me a like, and if you want to see a video where I completely excavate this worm bin and rebuild it, check out this video right here. All right, we'll put a little bit right there and over that broccoli piece, made a little bit of a mess there. And then we'll just put a paper towel right there. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing fantastic. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.